Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I want to thank all of my colleagues for their evident passion on this topic. It raises so many questions and so many concerns for all of us. I had the pleasure of appearing at uh, Representative Candelora's press conference when this subject first came out. I was surrounded by representatives from the Connecticut branch of AAA, the Connecticut Association of Police Chiefs, the Connecticut representative for the American Academy of Pediatrics, two lovely young women from an organization similar to SAD, and each one of them had the same message. Please, please do not do this. Do not subject our children, our state to this. The police chief's concern was the lack of a test that's reliable for recent marijuana use. Washington State, which recently legalized marijuana, smoking marijuana, using marijuana, by the way, doubles your risk of a crash, saw a 6% increase in fatalities in 2015 from people who tested positive for marijuana, while the rest of the country saw a decline. We've heard that marijuana is not a gateway drug. Approximately 10 to 15 percent of the population is vulnerable to addiction. And currently, and these are 2014, 2014 figures, approximately 4.2 million Americans over the age of 11 battled a marijuana disorder and marijuana abuse disorders accounted for the third highest number of treatment admissions to substance abuse programs. And I know we've said we're not, you know, children will not be allowed to smoke or use marijuana products, yet the presence in the home acclimates them to that use. And the American Academy of Pediatrics is so very clear on this. We learn about the developing brain in our adolescents and young people. Indeed, there was legislation before this chamber or in committee to raise the age of cigarette smoking to 21. Marijuana smoking in, in consequences include impaired short-term memory, decreased concentration, attention span. Indeed, long-term marijuana use has shown an increase in psychiatric conditions like schizophrenia and psychosis. This is not going to happen to everyone, just the way a gin and tonic doesn't make everyone, you know, an alcoholic, or one cigarette doesn't make everyone a three-pack-a-day smoker. But if you have that genetic prevalence, indeed it can lead to that. Use of marijuana in the home, secondhand marijuana smoke is, has shown up in adults and in some random studies of states in which marijuana use is legal, one, point, one in six infants admitted to hospital for respiratory syndrome had traces of marijuana in his or her system. And I think to, to, to finally comment, and you'll, you'll know how I feel about this, I have had no constituents approach me and say, please promote this. On the contrary, the constituents who have talked to me have said, please, please stand fast against this. I was privileged to attend a breakfast at the New London Superior Court. And after each judge from the civil branch, the juvenile branch, the criminal branch presented, they took questions. And I said, tell me, you in the judiciary, how do you feel about legalization of marijuana and recreational marijuana. To a man and woman, they said, don't do it. One of them commented that he almost never sees a docket where somewhere there isn't the line, started smoking marijuana at the age of nine or 10 or 11. I like to say, and I don't mean it flippantly, that politicians have a, an addiction to revenue. Once we get it, we can never get enough. And I know this was not a topic today, but please, let's not try to solve our addiction by creating more addicts in our population. Thank you very much for your, for your uh, indulgence, Madam Speaker.